What's going on everybody? It's your boy Kilo Loco and today, yes, we're going to be working with the timer app again, but I'm going to actually be showing you something for accessibility. And what I'm going to be doing today is going to I'm going to show you how to use AV speech synthesizer. So what AV speech synthesizer does is it, it's kind of like voiceover, except you can specifically state um, what you want to say and where you want to say it inside of your code. So you'll be able to actually have your app talk to the user. So if they're visually impaired, you can kind of give them directions or, um, you know, tell them whatever you need to tell them. So we're going to jump into that right now. But before we do, you know what I got to do? I got to show you the kiloloco.com um, website. And I just want you to head over there, see if there's anything you like. If you want to help out the channel, support the channel, make sure you check out the all access membership. It gives you all access to my courses as well gets you as well as gets you invited to the slack community or you could just take one of the courses individually so make sure you check that out all right let's jump into the code and as you can see simple ui just from our uh our timer app if you want to check out how we built the timer app just um you know click the little i right there and then um as you can see we're not doing anything too crazy in here uh, we have the timer stuff up here and then we have um some of the um some of the code that's actually firing the timer. Now, what I'm gonna actually do in here is because right now we're still, uh, based off of what happened in the past tutorials, we were firing um, every uh, 100th of a second. I'm actually going to update this and make it so that we're working with integers and that we're only firing every second. So let me do that real quick. All right, so real quick, I just want, I went ahead, made sure that this is a one integer, this is also a one, made sure that since we need to create a string from this, we're gonna be um, creating a, a double from our integer there, and then up here, I'm just making sure that it's an integer as well. So that's all we're doing so far. But let's actually jump into what the core of the tutorial is, and that's actually getting our app to talk to us. So let's go ahead and create another class. I'm gonna call it speech service. So we're gonna create a new file, call it speech service, and we're gonna go from there. All right, so now that we have our new file called speech service or whatever you want to call it, you know, you know, call it poop service, whatever you want to call it. But anyway, now that we have our service, uh, we have a class and we, we're also importing AV Foundation because once again, we're going to be working with AV Synthesizer and um, we obviously are going to need AV Foundation in order to work with AV Synthesizer. So uh, what we want to do is the only the only real function that we need in here is we need a, a function that's essentially going to allow us to um, enter in a string of whatever we want to say and then we want to have it say that thing. So let's go ahead and create that function real quick. So as you can see, we have this uh, say function. So we're gonna be able to create an instance of our speech service and we're gonna be able to say speech service dot say and then whatever we pass in there. The next thing that we need to do is we need to create what's called a utterance. And a utterance is essentially what AV speech synthesizer works with in order to say whatever it needs to say. So let's do that now. All right, as you can see, we're creating an AV speech utterance and that has an initializer where you pass in a string and we're just gonna pass in whatever we're passing in for the phrase. So next, what we need to do is we need to create a AV speech synthesizer. Now the synthesizer, um, instead of creating it every time, what I'm actually going to do is I'm gonna actually make it um, an instance property up here just so that we don't have to create uh, keep creating the synthesizer every time. So we'll put it up here, but we'll use it down here and then we'll pass the utterance to it. All right, so as you can see, I created um, a let, a constant called synthesizer. We're just creating an AV spin speech synthesizer. And then all we're doing is we're using that synthesizer and we're calling dot speak, that speak function, and we're passing the utterance to it. Now, the benefit of having a, uh, a synthesizer up here is that you can also, you can always refer back to the speech service, grab the, um, if, if you need it to, you would be able to um, create like another function that would pause it because the synthesizer actually has a couple of other functions. Like as you can see, you can make it continue speaking. You could check if it's speaking. You can pause it. You can stop it. You can do all these different things. So that's one of the benefits of making sure that we're still working with that same synthesizer. But essentially, just to get it to speak whatever we want, 
This is all we need to do. It's that simple. So let's go back over to our view controller. And now what we want to do is we want to actually have an instance of our speech service so that we can use it. All right, so now that we have a speech service, um, what we can do is when our view appears, we can have it say something. So let's go ahead and do uh, in our view did appear method. Let's go ahead and have it say something right now. So I have to add that that method right here. All right, so as you can see, I just added the view did appear method to my view controller. And then all I'm doing is calling our speech service and say and calling our say method, which is going to say say hell yeah so let's go ahead and run this and let's let's make sure that it's working all right here we go now i get this pop up um on my computer i'm not sure if you guys get it but for some reason i've been getting it a lot but um every time i run it i have to make sure that i do give it access to the microphone so i'm gonna just go ahead and say okay hell yay hell yay apparently i didn't spell yeah right so but uh thumbs up for the hell yay right <laughs> thumbs up for the hell yay let's try that again <laughs> Here we go. Here we go. Say okay. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. There you go. All right. So that is essentially in a nutshell. That's all you really need to do. Um, you have a speech service and then you just make it say the, these, um, say whatever you want it to say. So very simple, very straightforward. But there's a couple of other things that I want to do. I'm going to be, um, I'm going to be implanting uh, this speech service throughout this app right here so that we could give it a little bit more feedback. But before I, I go on to how we can implement it into the app and have it be more helpful to the user, let's go back over to the speech service and talk about some of the capabilities that we have with the speech uh, with the AV speech synthesizer itself or what I what I actually meant was actually the utterance. Now, the utterance is essentially the voice that's kind of speaking not, well not the voice but it, it has um properties on it that you can modify the way that it does speak so one of the thing one of the things that we can change is the rate at which the the uh speaking is happening so do we want it to be fast do we want it to be slow um how fast do we want it to move at so maybe i would do um what we can do is we have three properties that are automatically built in for us uh which are just they just have a float value so one of them is av speech utterance default speech rate which it's already set at that as you can tell i mean it's the default but if we were to jump over here into the documentation by command clicking and then jumping in uh, as you can see, there's a maximum speech rate and then there's a minimum speech rate. Now, if you didn't like the minimum, the default or the maximum, what you can do since it is a float is just enter in any value in between zero and one. Like, let's say we wanted to do 0 0.4 or whatever, then you can do that. But I'm not going to actually have the rate specified right here. Um, once again, since I'm working with the speech service, maybe I want to modify that outside of this actual file. I want to be able to have access to that. So I'm just going to create a rate property for my speech service. All right. And I'm just going to go ahead and set this to AV speech utterance default speech. Now, um, if you do end up deciding you want to do something like 0 0.4 in order to make sure that it's not going to end up being a double, we just want to make sure that we're going to specify that it is going to be a float in case you wanted to do something like 0 0.4 right here. Um, we want to make sure that it is a float. So what we'll do is we'll just pass the rate into the utterance rate. Now, the, the other thing that I want to talk about is um, the actual language, uh, not the language, but the, the voice, the voice is what I mean. So, so we would have utterance dot voice now in order to choose what voice you want you would have to do av speech uh voice speech synthesized voice this is the one that you want now with the av speech synthesized voice you would have to um, initialize it now as you can see you can initialize it with an identifier or with a language now it if, if you're new to this you definitely won't know which one to put um, I definitely recommend the language and we're about to go into why I recommend using language, but, um, I would recommend using language and depending on where you're, where you're from, you would just enter in what the language code is. So in my case, I want English and I want it to be, um, you know, United States English. Now, like I said, if you don't know what language to set for yours, there's a there's an easy way to figure that out. So I'm actually going to write out a function down here that's going to allow me to print out all the different languages that are available 
um, for the AV speech synthesized voice. All right, so as you can see, I created um, a function called languages. Maybe we'll call it uh, get languages just so that it's a little bit more clear, but uh, get languages. And all this is going to do is it's going to print out all the possible language or all the possible voices um, that, that we can get. Maybe I should have called it voices. So get voices. Anyways, call it whatever you want. Get poop, whatever. So as you can see, we have the AV speech synthesis. Um, synthesis voice and then there's this class property on it that says speech voices now this essentially returns an array of strings back or an array of all the different voices that are possible that that you can get so we're just going to do for each and we're going to print each one of those voices out so let's go ahead and go back to our view controller and then what i'll do is in this view did appear just real quick i'll just call um, my speech service and then i'll say get voices and what that will do is it'll log it to the console so I can see all the different voices that we can choose from. All right, so it ran and it's asking me if I want to do the timer. I don't need to because I just want to print all this out. Now, uh, okay. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. All right, so as you can see, it's printing out everything. Now, uh, these are really long, so let me just uh, close this side. But as you can see, these are all the different voices that we can use. So all these are different voices that we can use. And if you wanted to look at it like this, you can find the language that it's in. Like this is the language. Um, let's find the US one. So this is the language, right? And then if you wanted to initialize it by an identifier for whatever reason, this would be the identifier. Now, if you wanted to make this a little bit more clear, it's as simple as going back to our get voices function and Instead of uh, just printing out the voice, I'm just going to print out the language so that it's a little bit easier to read. All right, so we're going to say yeah. OK. And as you can see, and now we can put this so that I'm not hiding anything. Uh, as you can see, these are all the different languages. So find whatever one makes sense for you. Um, and obviously for somebody in the US, this makes the most sense for me. But let's say um, you know I was overseas and I wanted to change the accent. What I could do is I would go back over to my speech service and instead of um, en-us, I could just say gb. And now if I run this one more time and we say okay, Oh, yeah. See, it changes the voice. So that's that's pretty cool. So that's also another property that I might want to change later or as I go. So I'm just going to add voice up here as being an instance property as well. All right. So as you can see, we're able to modify the rate and the voice from outside of this class. We can modify it in our view controller if we need it to. Um, we're not going to I'm not going to show you that right now. But I mean, I just wanted to set up this class so that you can see how you would use it in maybe a production level project. Now, the last thing that I want to do is I just want to go through the view controller and I just want to um, in the spots that it makes sense to talk to the user. I want to add this to uh, I want to say things that are going to help out the user. So the first thing I'm going to do is in the view did appear. I'm just going to tell the user how to use the app. All right. So as you can see, as you can see, I kind of changed it up um, and I'm just saying uh, a, a, a brief description on how to use the app. So when we run the app, instead of them, <laughs> instead of them hearing, hell, yeah, they're going to actually hear how to use the app. So let's listen to that. Tap the bottom left of the screen to restart the timer. Tap the bottom right of the screen to toggle between starting and pausing the timer. See, so that's pretty much how uh, they would uh, be introduced to the app. So now they have a, a description of how to use the app if they're visually impaired. So let's go through and let's go ahead and add that to a couple of different spots. I'm going to add it to the, the, um, to the toggle timer area. And then I'm also going to add it to the did tap reset. And then lastly, I'm also going to add it. Well, also in here in the um, when you're starting the timer, I'm also going to make it so that every five seconds we get an announcement of what the time is. Once again, if this person's visually impaired, they won't be able to see what the time is. So maybe every five seconds I give them an announcement of where the timer's at. All right, so starting at the top, as you can see, I added um, starting timer whenever they start it. 
um, every five seconds, this is what this code is doing right here, every five seconds, as long as it's not zero, um, we're, we're gonna actually say, you know, however many seconds have passed. And then if we pause the timer, we're just gonna let them know the timer was paused. And if we restart the timer, we're gonna let them know that the timer was restarted. So let's run that one more time and let's see how everything sounds. All right, so here we go for the visually impaired. Let's do it. Tap the bottom left of the screen to restart the timer. Tap the bottom right of the screen to toggle between starting and pausing the timer. Okay, awesome. I know how to how to use the app. So now I want to tap the bottom right of the screen. Starting timer. All right. And then we're going to wait five seconds. Five seconds. All right. And I'm going to pause it. Pause timer. Cool. Starting timer. Okay. Ten seconds. All right. Pretty cool. Now restarting the timer. Restarting timer. All right, perfect. Now I have the UI a little bit messed up because it's just showing the zero, but, um, and, and I'll go, I'll go through and fix that real quick. All right. So I updated the, U, I, I updated the UI. So in the project, if you guys want the final project, it'll actually go back to showing this display label as being an empty, you know, bunch of zeros, but that's pretty much all I wanted to show you. AV speech synthesizer. If your person, if you're dealing with a user that's visually impaired, then you can have the app talk to them. Now, the very last thing that I want to show you is that obviously you don't want to be talking to all your users only for the visually impaired and a visually impaired person would probably have a voice over on so what we can do is we can make sure that it this is this safe function is only going to work if voice over is on so what we're going to do is we're going to import ui kit and then all we want to do is we just want to make sure it is voice over on because if it's not then we're going to just um not say anything All right, and all we're doing is we're just adding UI accessibility. It has this um, this static property on it, it where it says is voiceover running, and if it is, then it's going to go ahead and say everything that it needs to say. But if it's not, it's just going to return right there, and we shouldn't get anything um, being said. By default, the uh, simulator will have voiceover off. I, I don't actually know how to turn it on, but if you're on a real device, you could toggle voiceover on and off and you actually see that, um, you'll actually see that the code is running. So that's all you really needed to, uh, that's all you really need to know and to do in order to get your app talking to somebody that's visually impaired. I hope that helps. Um, let's try to make, uh, you know, one app for all people, you know, we want to, we want to reach as many people as we can, and we shouldn't be discriminating against somebody just because, uh, you know, they have, uh, an, an impairment. So that's all I wanted to show you guys today. Make sure you add a V speech synthesizer to your apps, make sure they're, you know, a uh, accessibility friendly, all that good stuff, and make sure you keep coding passionately guys. So thanks for your time and make sure you guys subscribe always. Like and subscribe. Later.